Hi, I'm John, and welcome to Smart Ways to Gain YouTube Subscribers Part 9. Great videos. So this video is about great videos, but more importantly about great video quality. So I'm going to walk you through some of the more technical aspects of what makes good quality video and how you can do it on your PC with the equipment you have now, hopefully. So there's three main aspects. One is recording, the raw video that you're going to record with. Two is the editing process. And three is the uploading and the conversion process that YouTube uses that ultimately people see when they watch your video. So let's take a look at the first one. Number one, recording. So obviously when you're recording, it's the most important aspect of making a video beyond the content itself. And that's because you can't have a better quality than your source material that you're going to edit and then ultimately upload to YouTube. So one of the aspects or one of the dirty little secrets about webcam software that comes with your webcam that you install on onto your PC is the fact that it doesn't really do a good job. It's kind of usually poorly written, or it's written for the lowest common denominator, it's written to be idiot proof, and so it has all these auto adjusting features or, or it assumes that your computer is only so fast and it really saps the abilities of some webcams, um, not all, but, but at least some of their true potential and the maximum capabilities of the hardware, meaning that you can record at much higher resolutions or better uh, video um, quality, color quality. All these things can be adjusted. Sometimes you don't even have that ability in webcam software. So the solution to this is to, is to use Microsoft's Media Encoder, which is a very unfortunately complicated piece of software, but I wrote a step-by-step -step blog with screenshots that walks you through setting up a webcam to record video. It does more than this, the software itself, but it will walk you through the steps that allows you to set up your webcam and also include a different audio source. If you have a separate microphone, a lapel mic, or even another webcam's microphone like I use to capture audio, it will combine those together into a seamless video. And once you have it set up, it's really easy to use. You just click record and record like you normally would. So um, check the description box for that and um, hopefully it will help. It's, don't be intimidated. There's a lot of steps, but I really break it down and circle the buttons you need to press and, and the things that you need to adjust that's going to be specific to your webcam. So I think it will really help people. If you really um, find your webcam lacking, it's a good place to spend maybe a couple, an hour or so um, trying to tweak it, and you, you'd be surprised at the improvement in the results. Another thing that many people overlook is their point-and-click instant photo cameras. A lot of those cameras now have video capabilities. They have a microphone built in, and sometimes they're a lot better than the webcam that's on your computer, or if you're just looking to start making videos on YouTube, sometimes those video, the video quality of a, of a point-and-click camera is far superior than a webcam. Um, another thing, taking a step beyond this, is people that have high-end digital SLRs, same thing. These type of cameras now are being used to shoot amateur films are so good um, because they have such high-quality lenses and things like that. So if you're into you know, stationary photography, you know you can look into your documentation. A lot of these higher-end cameras, especially the newer ones, take incredibly good widescreen, uh, high-definition video. Um, in fact, I'm going to include a link of the guys at Engadget, the website, and they shoot a, a weekly video blog um, with a one of these high-end digital cameras and you just be astounded at the quality that they get and it kind of shows you to the degree at which um, maybe non-traditional video cameras can be used to record incredibly high quality video if you want to go down that path. Um, yeah, so I recommend definitely taking a look at that, especially people that have very crappy webcams and previous step didn't work or don't have any ability to capture video at all. Um, these cameras are great. Okay, I have two quick tips when it comes to audio. One is if you're having any trouble with your volume or an echoey effect, kind of a hollow effect in your in your in your voice or what you're recording, is try to get as close as you can to the source. Get your, get your if you're speaking, get close to your microphone as possible. Um, obviously, keep yourself in frame and things like that. That actually makes a huge difference in terms of the audio quality and the depth and timbre of your voice. Um, another thing too is to keep track of any fans or heaters or fish bubblers or TV or radio that's going on in the background. Um, people like to talk while there's audio in the background, like a, like a song. Add that in the post production set. You know, just record it in as much uh, silent environment as you possibly can, and then add any effects or you know songs that you want in post production. Because really, when you think about it, video is 50% audio, 50% video. In essence, because it's a lot of times it's what you're saying is the most important thing, not what you're seeing for many videos. Number two, editing. So editing really for me begins and ends with Windows Movie Maker since I'm a PC user. Um, it's free, it's easy to use, it's customizable. 
free. You can download it. I'll supply the link. So if you have Windows 7, it doesn't come with Movie Maker anymore, but you can download the Vista one. It works just fine. I've tested that already. Two, it's easy. You import videos. You drag them into your timeline. You adjust the start and stop points, add titles and credits and music. It's all pretty drag and drop. It's pretty intuitive. Um, I, it's For me, it's, it's good enough. I don't need really complicated editing software to do the videos that I do. I don't think most people on YouTube do either, unless you're doing try to do really complicated special effects or anything. That's beyond the scope of, of my series. And, and three, I think that um, the customization end of it, where you can create uh, high definition like uh, resolutions that aren't normally by default given with Windows Movie Maker. I made a blog post a few months ago that steps you through that, how to create your own high def profiles for Movie Maker so you can export movies in high def. Even video that isn't starting off in high def, you can you will scale it up and make it look sometimes better, sometimes not. Um, but anyway, I'll include some standard profiles and, and the blog will explain how you use them. I really recommend people that don't want to spend any money, again, my video series about doing this stuff on the cheap. Um, I really recommend it. Um, it's a little buggy, the software, unfortunately, Windows Movie Maker. So save a lot, control less, control less when you're making your, pro uh, when you're, when you're editing your videos and things like that in it. But um, I highly recommend it and um, I use it for all my videos. So that's the strongest recommendation I can make. Number three, video on YouTube. So the final thing I want to talk about in this video is the video that you upload is not the video that's shown on YouTube, unfortunately. Um, they go through their own encoding process. They encode it with their own um, codecs, which is usually the flash codec. Um, I think it's like technically H.263, and then there's the more MPEG-4 modern codec, which is H.264. And they will also um, greatly uh, reduce the bit rate of higher bit rate videos. It's really hard to predict what the, how, what the hell is going to you know, come out of your... Um, of you know your inputted video and what outputs on YouTube, it's a very frustrating process. It sometimes it takes a lot of trial and error with different bit rates, different resolutions. Um, so let's take a look at some of those resolutions, and um, hopefully I'll be able to explain um, what's going on. Okay, the first list of resolutions we're looking at is the standard definition which is four by three aspect ratio, kind of old school TV format, the more box format. And it's, um, these are the, the four main ones to use. It's pretty straightforward. If you're going to shoot for one of these resolutions, you upload, you export your movie at these resolutions using the custom profiles that I talked about with Movie Maker or using some other video editing format. And it's pretty straightforward. I would only recommend using the lower ones if your webcam source is that of that resolution. Um, or if you have a hard time uploading your video, your internet connection resets, you pay by the by the byte that you upload or anything like that. There's nothing wrong with uploading something at the lowest resolutions. Um, that's what YouTube used to be two or three years ago. That's the only resolution they supported. So it's not horrible or anything like that. But if you're given a choice, you know, definitely want to use the 640 by 480 or something like that. Um, and so we'll move on to the next one in the widescreen format. This is the format that I recommend people use just because it fills out the screen. It's not vital or anything like that, but you have an option. Might as well shoot in widescreen. Um, it, it, it creates kind of more, I think, a visual pleasing effect than having like a quarter of your screen just be black bars. Um, anyway, so the first one you noticed is the 1080p option. YouTube added this a few months ago. Um, complete overkill, in my opinion. Uh, most uh, display formats people watch their videos on can't even go up to this resolution. It, it's completely uh, CPU intensive. It takes an incredible amount of CPU to even display it. Um, the next one is 720p, and the P stands for progressive, by the way. It just means it, it fills up the screen every refresh. It's a, it's a all computers base video basically works this way now. Um, this is what I recommend now, actually. I, I poo pooed it in um, the last video, but now a few, uh, many months have gone by, and they've really got their act together in terms of offering a variety of lower resolution options in 720p. So a lot of camcorders now, even cheap ones, record in high definition. Um, I recommend this. Um, the only drawback with 720p is A, it takes up a lot of hard drive space, and two, it takes a long time to render these movies out and say Windows Movie Maker or whatever you use at that resolution. So the more CPU cores you have, the, the faster your computer you have, the better that is for this. Um, also, the uh, odd 800, or 800 uh, 540 by 480 is um, what kind of webcams will top out at, and that's a good resolution, still widescreen. It's not quite high def, um, but I recommend that as well. That's also a good one. And then they have the more smaller a widescreen, again, for the same reasons I mentioned. You know, if that's all your webcam will do, might as well just use that resolution and uh, just kind of hope for the best and, and just make the best of what you have. So these are the resolutions that YouTube uses that you actually watch. And um, it's good to know these because you can match them up with what you're exporting and not waste uh, time and money. 
So just two more simple things before I go that I think people will find interesting. One is the YouTube Creators Corner. It's a series of videos, some of them made by YouTube, some of them made by other people, that teach you how to more of the advanced techniques that are way beyond the scope of what I'm talking about, making simple videos like shooting in front of green screen and sound issues and just all kinds of different aspects of making videos, more professional or semi-professional type level videos. Um, it's a whole section of their website that they don't really talk about that much um, called the Creators Corner. I'll supply the link in the description box. And the other thing, and maybe more importantly to people, is the tags that you two have added now that allow you to kind of massage the video that's already uploaded to YouTube. You can crop video that's 3 by 4 aspect ratio to 16 by 9. You can stretch video like if you have a weird camcorder. Sometimes camcorder, when you upload camcorder video, it will be squished. It will allow you to expand it out and things like that. It's a kind of a latch disk effort that you can use to kind of save the visual quality or the aspect ratios of your video that you've uploaded. Um, it's free to try. It doesn't do any permanent damage to your video. It just kind of is a post-production effect that's used when people watch videos. So it works for any Buddy, um, add those to the tag section of your video so you have to edit the video uh, the video description and right below it's the tag so you just add those I'll add the link to the YouTube page that explains this in much more detail so anyway that's it for this one and uh, hopefully you got something out of it and if you have any questions or anything you know leave them at the bottom but until next time take care